Hello, this is Zoe, and I feel like talking. Keep in mind, I don't necessarily think I'm correct about anything that I'm speaking about. These are my thoughts, though, and I just feel like talking. And uh, yeah, if anyone's out there who just feels like listening to someone ramble about various things, these are spiritual topics though, so if you're not into that, you can click away now, but if you like just, you know, if you, if you like thinking about spiritual things and maybe some unusual things and you're the sort of person that thinks outside the box, then you might like what I'm thinking about. So, I've just kind of been letting my mind wander today. I've uh, been pretty stressed out lately and thinking too much, you know, like I, I can never seem to not to do that, but I'm in a mode right now where I'm just sort of letting my thoughts meander. Um, I have a lot of air in my birth chart, so I like Gemini and Aquarius and Libra, <laughs> so I, I just, yeah, my birth chart, by the way, is, it's very much, um, all the elements in my chart, so I feel like I'm pretty balanced in terms of my birth chart, but sometimes I just have, sometimes I just have a tendency to think too much, and even when I'm not stressed out, I'm still thinking, 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 like I just have a very inquisitive mind, I'm always thinking about various things, and how things connect, before I go too far down that rabbit hole, First, I want to say before I talk about this spiritual sort of what may seem religious, I don't really think of myself as a religious person. I have my own way of being with God and spending time with God because I do believe in God. There was a time when I didn't, and then there was a time that I did, and then there was a time that I didn't again. But as I'm speaking about this stuff right now, I do. I'm not the sort of person who thinks that one religion is better than another. I think that all religions in the world serve a purpose for humanity and particular personalities and cultures and just ways of looking at the world, ways, different ways of perceiving things. I think, I believe essentially though that all religions can be distilled down to one set of truths that we all carry in our hearts and in our minds. I believe we're born with those good things. So I'm speaking about the good in all religions. I believe we're all born with that goodness. And the dog in the neighborhood agrees. <laughs> so, uh, so let me just, yeah, put that out there because I am probably one of the least judgmental people that anyone could ever meet. Even when I am judgmental, I tend to like think later about it. And yeah, I'm just I'm always considering things. I'm always thinking. So I hope that makes sense what I just said. So let's move on to where my sort of rambling thoughts started. I was thinking about the part in the Bible, the Christian Bible, which I don't necessarily think of as Christian either because it comes from Judaism. Um, you know, the roots of Christianity coming from Judaism. I really like Eastern thought processes, that very mystical, meandering sort of you know, parables and all that, where things aren't necessarily 
clear or black and white, you know, I really like that a lot. At least that's the way I perceive a lot that's in the Bible and other Eastern ways of thinking, Buddhism. Also, I really appreciate Shinto religion, Japanese Shinto religion. I really like a lot. I like the idea of animal spirits and I do believe that animals are spirit guides on this planet. For instance, I think that birds are angels, fairies, yeah, just fascinated by the animal kingdom. I do think of it as a kingdom that we need to have respect for. Because I was raised Christian, this is kind of where I'm coming from. However, like I said, I could have been born anywhere in the world and I would have been a spiritual person as I am now, probably, no matter what my family believed. So I just happened to be plunked down into a Christian household. So that's the way I was raised. So that's kind of where my thoughts usually begin when I think about religion based on my personal experiences, past personal experiences. So I've been thinking about the passage in Luke chapter 5 verses 17 through 39 about Jesus healing a paralyzed man who was lowered through a roof so that Jesus could heal him and forgive him. There's a part in these passages where it says, so I will prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, stand up, pick up your mat and go home. So these are just my thoughts. Like I said, doesn't mean that I'm right or wrong. I just feel like talking. Personally, I don't think that Jesus, Yeshua, I prefer to call him by Yeshua. So it's so much more gentle. I like that sound, Yeshua. Reminds me of the wind in the trees. I don't think that Yeshua thought of himself as more than anyone else. I believe that he was such a humble, humble being. I believe that those around him who were angry at him were angry because they assumed things about him that were more about themselves and I think Yeshua understood that I think Yeshua was very intuitive like so intuitive that he could pick up on the slightest expression or nuance in a person's demeanor that told him a lot about what the person was thinking. So let me just read this. I'll just read this. One day, while Yeshua was teaching, some Pharisees and teachers of religious law, okay, so very learned men, because we're speaking about religious law. Some Pharisees and teachers of religious law were sitting nearby. It seemed that these men showed up from every village in all Galilee and Judea, as well as from Jerusalem and the Lord's healing power was strongly with Yeshua. Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a sleeping mat. They tried to take him inside to Yeshua, but they couldn't reach him because of the crowd. So they went up to the roof and took off some tiles. Then they lowered the sick man on his mat down into the crowd, right in front of Yeshua. Seeing their faith, Yeshua said to the man, young man, your sins are forgiven. But the Pharisees and teachers of religious law said to themselves, who does he think he is? That's blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. Yeshua knew what they were thinking. Okay, I think that's very key here. Like I was just speaking about how intuitive he was. Yeshua knew what they were thinking. So he asked them, why do you question this in your hearts? in your hearts where we feel things. So then it goes on to say, he says, is it easier to say your sins are forgiven or stand up and walk? 
As I was reading this, I was thinking, well, to me, it seems like the answer to that question would be, it's easier for us to say your sins are forgiven rather than say to someone paralyzed, stand up and walk. So I think that's very key here. Then it says, he says, so I will prove to you that the son of man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. In this passage here, because this is coming from the Christian Bible, son is capitalized and man is capitalized, implying that Yeshua meant that he thought of himself as better than or more than, but I don't think so necessarily. I think this, again, these are just my thoughts, but I don't think, I don't believe that he thought of himself that way. I think that he did understand the deep connection between himself and God, and that because he was so close to God, that then he knew that, he just knew that he knew things, and he knew that he had the authority of God because he was so close to God. So then, so he says, so I will prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Yeshua turned to the paralyzed man and said, stand up, pick up your mat and go home! Exclamation point. Very powerful. So right then and there, he proves that by the power of God coming through him, in his voice, the power that that has because he believed in what he was saying and because he had such love for everyone, everyone, and because he had that love in his heart, he had that, he had that knowledge and power that the Pharisees, the teachers of religious law, were missing because they were judging rather than believing and having faith and having love in their hearts for the paralyzed man that was lowered down to Yeshua. So I will prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins and that the Hebrew Bible, the Son of Man, means essentially a human being. It speaks about our weakness as human beings, as flesh. So Yeshua was Jewish, so he would already know that saying that would get a reaction. So I don't believe that he was speaking of himself in lofty terms. I believe that he knew that using that term of you know, I will prove to you that a human being has the authority on earth to forgive sins, upset the men of the law, of religious law, because they believe that only God has that authority. So I believe that this is, this passage here is about forgiveness and forgiving one another. I think that that's what this is about, that here on earth, each and every one of us has that authority to forgive one another our sins. How powerful is that towards peace on earth? That's so amazing to me to think about. Is it easy to do? No. Is it possible? Yes. Is it possible to forgive one another? Yes, absolutely. Is it easy? No. Is it worth it? Yes. So let's read the last part here. Jesus knew what they were thinking, so he asked them, why do you question this in your hearts? Is it easier to say your sins are forgiven or stand up and walk? So I will prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, stand up, pick up your mat and go home. And immediately, as everyone watched, the man jumped up, picked up his mat, and went home praising God. Everyone was gripped 
with great wonder and awe, and they praised God, exclaiming, we have seen amazing things today. Oftentimes I think about the King of Cups in the tarot as Yeshua, or that spirit anyway, his spirit, his soul, his heart. It's like the ultimate King of Cups, and some believe that Yeshua may have been a Pisces. I've also heard Aries. I had a friend a long time ago who thought that Yeshua was an Aries, so Aries, Pisces, maybe, fire and water. Oh, well, there's 1212 on the clock right now. That may be an angel number for you, 1212. Even when we are surrounded by a lot of people, we have a lot of friends and acquaintances and family, we are all still kind of alone in a way. We're kind of born alone, if that makes sense, even though, you know, we're born from our mothers and we go from the womb to hopefully immediate physical contact with other human beings, hopefully. You know, we go from the womb and then we go through a sort of death, a transformation, because we're leaving that place and we go to another place, which is into this physical realm. So we go from the water to the earth and the air and the fire interesting to think about, but that's kind of how I think about life and birth and death and what is death and what is birth and I believe that in a way when we're born we die and we start dying, you know, immediately as soon as, as, soon as we are conceived, you know, that death begins. It's like, it's, it's almost like we are always embodying that life and death, life and death, life and death simultaneously in a way. Let me see here. Um, angel number 1212. Let's see what it says. Here's what this says. This is just one interpretation. So you can reject this interpretation if it doesn't fit for you. Um, and yeah, I want to say just choose your own interpretation. But I will read this to you for anyone out there who's not familiar with angel numbers or maybe you just appreciate having this read to you. So or something about stepping out of one's comfort zone is a sign to take new directions, begin new projects, something that you may have been wanting to do for a long time, releasing fears or apprehensions, pursuing passions and purpose, asking that we stay on a positive path, use our talents and abilities to the benefit of ourselves and others, Staying positive by using, you know, positive affirmations, maybe putting something on your phone that helps, that makes you, that just helps you feel peaceful and loved whenever you see it. So for me right now, currently, it's this picture of Yeshua. Anything that in this 3D realm that helps, that reminds you that you're loved or helps you feel loved. You know, even if you're surrounded by a lot of people, like I said, we can still feel alone. The experience of being in our own minds, in our own particular bodies, our separate bodies, you know, that seem so separate and feel so separate so often, even when we are with other people that love us very much, we are still in many ways alone. It seems to me like it's meant to seem that way. We're never really alone, though. So back to speaking about, you know, when, like being in the womb, for instance. That's like, that seems so alone if you think about it. Like if you can imagine, if you're, if you're an imaginative person, you can imagine being alone in a, in a, or in a womb, okay? And you're just there and you can hear the heartbeat of your mother probably hear her breathing but do you know what that is do we know what that is when we're in the womb like right now I, I don't know if it's coming through on this microphone but I have my window open and I can hear the wind in the trees so that's like that's like to me that's God's breath you know that's God breathing around me so in, in a way I'm in a womb but it seems like I'm in the world, you know what I'm saying? So when we're in the womb, it can seem like we're, I imagine that that would seem like we're in some sort of a world, 
I believe we do have an experience. Maybe most of us can't remember, but we have awareness, I believe, and we have a feeling. And then when it's time to be birthed into this world, how traumatic, how that must be so traumatic, like a death in a way, because it's like leaving one place to go into this other realm, this physical space of air and earth. And, and water, but the water is sort of distant, you know what I mean? Um, and fire, and voices, physical sensations, and odors, and you know, both pleasant and unpleasant. Pleasant and unpleasant voices, pleasant and unpleasant physical sensations. And it must be very traumatic to be, to, to be born and maybe that's why we most of us don't remember that birth because it's it's a trauma in a way like very powerful so i kind of think of death as being like that as well when we come to the end of these our physical lives like we must have a sense or a knowing that that's coming as we probably do in the womb when we're about to be born some babies are born during the day, some babies are born at night. When were you born? Do you know when you were born? I feel like that might have a lot to do with our personalities when we were born. And that however we are as personalities is, is okay. That's the way we're supposed to be. That's how we were made. And that's okay. So anyway, this says to use positive affirmations ways of looking at things, imaginings, visualizing to enhance your life, manifesting positive outcomes, and then 1212 distills to the number six, so I'm not going to read that one as well, but um, you might want to look that one up as well. Angel number 33, or 330, 303, numbers like that, if you're interested, and the number three on its own. So back to birth and death, you're a very spiritual person. You probably are already aware of the notion that we transform many, many times throughout what seems like our lifetime on this planet, whatever space you feel you inhabit at any particular time. I believe that what we think of as one life that we have, like, you know, we're born and then we die at a particular age, you know what I'm saying? Our, what is considered our lifetimes by ourselves and others that know us. I don't know that that's the reality. I kind of think that maybe we die in what seems like one lifetime many, many times over and over and over. It's just started raining a little bit outside. I actually knew the rain was coming hours ago. I don't think it was predicted though. I was talking to Siri last night just to see what Siri would say because I I felt like rain was coming. But Siri said, no, it's not predicted. And I was like, I feel like rain is coming. And I had double confirmation this morning that rain was on its way. I just knew. So yeah, it's just started raining outside a little bit. I believe that we die and are reborn, die and are reborn, die and are reborn many times in this, what we think of as our lifetime. And then there's also our birth when we come into this physical realm, and then there's our passing into another realm. I believe both a birth and a death, just like I, I believe that being born is a birth and a death simultaneously. And it's very powerful that passing through from one experience to another, from one realm to another, from one portal to another, from one womb to another womb. So in this realm, I believe that there are many portals within this realm. So for instance, when we get on a plane and we go somewhere else, we're literally going from one portal to another. We may be also time traveling as well. I don't believe that we need those, that mode of transportation though. <laughs> I, 
I believe that, I mean, obviously we think that we need them because so many of us get, go to the airport, get on a plane and go somewhere. That's all an illusion. I think everything is an illusion, a dream. For some reason we think that we need like a car to get somewhere, you know what I'm saying? Or a boat, but we actually don't. You may like Star Trek, whoever, um, whoever is listening, if you've made it this far with me, you may like Star Trek. So I do think that that way of transporting from one place to another, from one planet to another is possible and it is coming. We just need to know that it's, we need to remember that it's possible. Um, I was going to say no, but I think we need to remember that that's possible. We don't need the vehicle. And you may be the sort of person who can literally, you know, travel out of your body just by thinking about it. So anyway, these are my thoughts today. I hope that you enjoyed listening and spending some time with me today. Thank you for being here. If you have any thoughts that are open-minded, you're welcome to comment below. If you made it this far, comment the word birds are angels. Thank you so much for being here, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.